What's up, EA? This is the ClickFunnels 2 Comma Club Award for making a million dollars using their software. And I, I'm excited about this, I like this, but what I'm really excited about uh, is more, it's less about total revenue, but it's more about monthly recurring revenue. And, and this masterclass is gonna explain a lot of that. Why? Because recently we sold our first company called PayFunnels. And it was a software, a lot of you guys maybe use it. Uh, it basically makes invoicing really easy. And we built this up using monthly recurring revenue, people that paid monthly. And the cool thing about that is if you have a monthly recurring revenue business, people want to buy it. And so we actually sold PayFunnels uh, early uh, this year, 2017. And uh, I just got on a call and recorded a masterclass with the buyer of PayFunnels. We walked through um, what I was thinking the whole time, what he was thinking the whole time. Uh, why we decided to sell, why he decided to buy a business, because he wasn't an entrepreneur before this. He, he this is really one of his first kind of big gigs, and he ended up taking a loan out to pay for it. And so some of you guys should be thinking about buying businesses rather than starting from scratch. Uh, and this match class is gonna answer uh, why you should do that, why you should be thinking about that, and how to even go about that. And so uh, this is a really honest one, to be honest with you, this is one that I, I don't want probably being shared around. Um, with other people and, and we talk about just the kind of the nitty-gritty details of how we felt and, and even why uh, I almost pulled out at the very very last minute and so uh, check it out you're gonna love it uh, his name is Mo he's a great guy and uh, you're gonna learn a whole lot about the entire transaction so you guys in let me know what you think Hey, what's up, Entrepreneur Alliance? Dave here with my new friend, Momin, who uh, is gonna break down with us. We're gonna kind of talk to you guys about what it looked like to sell pay funnels and buy pay funnels. And so for those of you guys don't know, pay funnels was the app that we built up to uh, a pretty good amount of customers kind of over time. And we got to the point where we were looking at selling it so we could go more all in with proof because our tensions were a bit divided here. And so uh, after kind of going through that whole process, Momin was the uh, gentleman who won the bid and ended up buying pay funnels. And we've had an opportunity to work together kind of on the back end of that for a while. And so uh, in this match, we just want to kind of talk through what it looks like to buy companies, what it looks like to sell companies, what are the things that you need to be thinking about in that? Because I learned a ton. I didn't really know what I was doing kind of going into that whole process. And, uh, and then Momin felt the same way as you're kind of buying your first company. And so we just wanted to break that down. So welcome to the EA Masterclass moment. Hey, thanks for having me, Dave. You bet, man. You bet. So, so yeah, so what do you want to kind of do to start off? Just kind of like take us back before the sale. Give a little bit of a backstory from my end, kind of why we were looking to sell, what it was looking like, you know, at that point, and kind of from your end uh, here as well to know the backstory. But, but EA guys, so for us, Again, PayFunnels was our first ever software company that we had built. It was a product that we built to solve our own pain, to solve our own invoicing pain. Um, basically, what PayFunnels does is it hooks up to Stripe, makes it really, really easy to send invoices to clients just via a single link. So it's kind of a really nice front-end interface to uh, Stripe. And so we built this thing ourselves. We, we kind of grown it over time, you know, kind of alongside our information product, 6K Success and all that. Uh, and it you know, grew up to a pretty good amount of customers. I don't know if, if you want to say kind of the number of customers, feel free to, you know, if you want to, um, but grew up to a pretty good size uh, amount of customers. And, and we were kind of getting to the point where we had a lot of things going on, right? We we're kind of juggling, you know, Entrepreneur Alliance, wanting to do that really well. We're wanting to, we've got this new idea of proof and, and we just, we were kind of spread thin, to be honest with you. We weren't a huge team. I think we were about three people, four people on, at the time and so we're spread kind of thin and, and we're trying to figure out how do we kind of move faster on, on this idea and so one of the thoughts was well you know pay funnels is going to continue to grow we like pay funnels we, we think that's going to be a good product a year from now two years from now um, but what if we sold it off and took the cash flow or took the, the ca upfront cash from that basically the next you know several years profits and we just took that and we invested that into proof. Um, so our mindset was not that, you know, we, we weren't into pay funnels. It was just, hey, we can only put our attention so, you know, so many different places. And so uh, we kind of came to the decision that, hey, this would be better for us if we could find someone to buy pay funnels, if we could eliminate one extra thing that we were thinking about and then take all that cash and kind of dump it into hiring more developers and more people for proof and really use that to kind of catapult proof. 
And so um, that was kind of our motivation going into it. So I think if you're like thinking about, you know, the purpose of, the purpose of selling businesses, uh, that's one cool thing is you can basically take the next several years of profits, take it all at once. Uh, and some deals, some deals you can kind of, you know, have them, you know, pay out over time uh, and then move a little bit quicker on something else. And so that was a little bit kind of the backstory for us. But Mo, why don't you share, like, well, like why were you looking to buy a business? What's kind of your background? Um, have you bought lots of businesses before? Uh, how did you even get to this point here where you're kind of saying, hey, I think it'd be nice to buy a tech company? All right. So, so Dave, uh, I worked for Corporate America almost 10 years and it was time for me to quit and, you know, start something on my own. So back in the 2000, middle of 2014, that's when I quit and I decided to start my own software consulting business. So I got a few projects and every project came with the, with the boss and it was getting a little hectic. You know, most of these projects were from non-tech people and their requirements changed. It was very frustrating. So at that point I said, you know, instead of building projects and software for other people, I might just do it for myself. So I started looking into uh, acquiring an existing business, started uh, subscribed on, you know, website like FE International, Flippa, and a few others, and waited for a long time, about two and a half years, that's when I came across, you know, PayFunnel. So I've worked with Stripe, I know how Stripe works, and then you guys use Node.js and AngularJS as a technology stack, and I'm very familiar with that, and it was like a a perfect match. So I said, you know, let me go try, let me go bid for it. So I could have actually built it from ground up, and yeah, I kind of did because uh, I'm not sure you know, if you remember. Originally, you had a valuation, and then after a time, you know, you backed off and came back again. And within one month's period, I was able to build whole complete application. At that point, I started thinking, all right, you know, I have the app. Where are the customers? And, and then on, I realized. Let, let, let me pause real quick. I want to get into this kind of in depth, but okay. before I think there's a couple of questions people would have, and, and and I think they would love to hear. So, so you're working in corporate America, you know, yeah. you, you you you're a developer. You know, you're Correct. a good developer. You know how to develop. You go Correct. out and you kind of start your own consulting business, right? Where you're Correct. building software for other people on contracts. A lot of people listen to this are probably consultants themselves doing marketing or maybe some software stuff. Um, you decide you want to buy a business. Like, like, why did you want to leap to the point of buying a business where I think most people would say, oh, why don't I just go start a business from scratch? What, what, like, how did it even come across your mind to go to start and just buy one? So, so, so there are many factors. So when you start something from ground up, it's very high risk. You know, first of all, you're validating an idea. Is your idea going to work or not? So you don't know that's a risk. Second, you have to spend a lot of time, you know, not only building it, but then after it's built, promoting it, finding those first initial hundred customers. It's very hard. It's time consuming. You don't see money. It's frustrating. People get burned out at that phase because you have a product, you don't have customer, customer don't know you exist. Third, you don't have like, you know, because of that, you don't have a positive cash flow. So the risk factor is way too high at early phase. And then you, ha you have to have a team. You have to have a team that's really good at technology. Second, who's good at marketing. And third, you know, once you have those customers, you know, you have to support them, you know, retain them and not let them go away. So if you don't have this, our chances of failure is really high. So that was so, so keeping that in the mind, you know, where PayFunnel was, you know, they already validated the idea. It's working. They already had more than 100 customers, for sure. They did, I think at the time it was about 400. Uh, and it was positive cash flow. So it kind of, you know, validated the idea, had customers, positive cash flow, which is a perfect. And on top of that, the technology stack that you guys use, and I'm familiar with that, so it was like, you know, perfect, awesome. You know, let's take this product, uh, let's build what's missing, and take it to the next level. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. By the way, I just switched audio microphone sources. Can you hear me? Okay, still. Yeah, I can. Microphone. I can. Sweet, yes. sweet. Okay, no, very cool. And so you're kind of looking at from like the risk profile, and I think as I've looked into and I kind of been on the selling side of a business, I'm totally with you. Like I don't know that I want to start 
a business from the ground up again or start a software company from the ground up again, even with proof over the last six months. And there's just so many little things to do in the first six months or year of a business that it's just like, it's just, it's kind of backbreaking. If you can skip over all that and kind of get to the point where, hey, the idea is validated, there's customers, there's cash, uh, I know it works, um, particularly if there's customers on subscription, you know, right. makes it money for you. And so you not only know there's this many customers this month, like, you know, there's pretty much going to be a certain amount of customers every month past that. And so that really eliminates the risk for you. Um, so I love that. So another question is, you know, like, like how did you get the money for pay funnels? I mean, did you take out a loan? Did you have it saved up already from other businesses? I think people are going to be wondering, well, like, if I want to do this, like, how can I even get money to go buy a business? So I already had a savings, uh, and that was part of the deal in there when I submitted a proposal, I guess you guys or the broker, they wanted to make sure that I have enough capital to you know back my bid. So I had a savings, but what I did is, and I told this from the day one, I could pay everything for cash, but I took a loan and took a loan because I want pay funnel to pay for itself. So I'm keeping majority of the capital still with me, my savings still with me, took a bank loan and it's only five year term and I'm pretty sure if you do it well, I can pay it off less than that time. So idea is you take somebody else's money, invest into this business and let that business pay for itself. So that Beautiful. was the idea. And what does it look like to go to a bank and get a loan for that? I mean, how do, is that available to everybody? Is it because you had the savings already that they said, well, okay, you've obviously got some capital and collateral here. I mean, how does somebody get a loan from a bank like that? Uh, it's just the personal relationship. I have a really good relationship with the bank. Bank, not only do they see your capital or assets, but they also see you know, how long you've been there. I believe you guys and we use the same bank, Capital One, and that's what they saw. You know, they said, "Okay, I've been doing business with them. My credit score is really good," and I showed them the business. I showed them the, you know, the graph. The so did you take the curve. profit and loss statement and the all that? Did you take all that from Pay Funnels and take it to the business? And say, "Hey, here's the business I want to buy." Correct. And I told them this is a, so. I have like a consulting business. I said, "Here's my skills. You know, this is what we've been doing." And this is the business that we're acquiring. So they want to see that the business that you're trying to acquire is adding value to your existing business. So yeah. I said, and there, there are a few other things that, you know, that happen between your first and second, or uh, uh, when you came back into uh, what we call FE International. Yep. So people may not know, but, you know, or hopefully I can share this, but initially yep. you came with the offering and then later figured it out you were asking way too low, and then you came back and asking for more. So, so here's the story. So first time around, I didn't get in. I was trying to you know negotiate. Every entrepreneur should negotiate. And you know, if somebody's giving something for free, ask for two. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's everybody should negotiate. You know, even if you think it's a hack of a deal, try to you know negotiate. If you don't get it, if you get it, great. If you don't get it, pay anyways. So I tried to negotiate and I kind of lost, you know, I think somebody else, you know, won that bid. So I said, I don't know what, you know, forget it and I'll build my own. You know, if Dave and his team can do it, I can do it too. So so I built, I bought a domain called uh, easypay.io and I started hacking and I started working and in a month's period, I, ha I pretty much had product ready close to pay for them. And then, and then I reached out to the broker and I asked him, hey, what's going on? Just wanted to see where the new bar stands versus where I am. And he said, oh, the deal did not go through, but you know, they're asking for more, so you have another chance. And at that point, I was like, okay, cool. If I acquire this business, all the features that I worked on, all I have to do is migrate from old product to a new one. Because were those written if, in the same language? Were those Angular? Correct. So, so I was like, you know, I can just port the old put the new code to the pay funnel. And rather than rebranding as easy pay, I thought, you know, I'll keep it as pay funnel because people are used to it. And, you know, I didn't want to change. I did not want it to, you know, tell the existing customer, come over here, use this product and not that. That would actually cause a lot of churn or a lot of, you know, yep. people would be messed up. And then I don't want it to go through a training and link updates and stuff. So I said, you know, 
also, you know, let me just give another chance. And I think it's probably from the bid to the transfer of money and taking the asset was two weeks process. And, and that's pretty much it. Cool. 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 Yeah. No, that, that's really cool. I think that's something I've kind of wondered about. How do you even go acquire capital to buy businesses? And even as we kind of grow in the future, like I want to acquire businesses to add to the proof, um, you know, software suite. So I think it's really cool for people to know that, I mean, you can just go develop a relationship with the bank. That'd probably be the tip for you guys listening is like, be developing relationships right now with people that have access to capital because it can catapult you years in advance, whether that's banks, whether that's other private lenders, whether that's just people that have uh, money. I think capital and other people's money can be a huge thing. Um, so, okay, so we're getting to the point where, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to sell a business, right? I've never done this before. I don't know how to do this. Selling a business sounds kind of hard. Do I need to like know people that want to buy it? Do I have to go find the buyer? I don't know. So I'm like, I messaged a few people online that I knew that might be interested in buying pay funnels. And, you know, we'd kind of have some negotiations just over Facebook chat. There were people that were interested, but at the same time, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing at all. I'm like, either I'm going to get screwed over, they're going to get screwed over, and I don't know which one it is, and I don't want either one to happen. You know, I don't want to get like a deal that's too good for me and like bad for them because then like the relationship's going to go bad. So uh, what I ended up doing is I ended up reaching out for help and I found a company called FE International. You can go to feinternational.com, um, check it all out. Got in contact with them and they basically kind of valued the business. And they're, they're a business broker, kind of typically like, you know, working in software businesses, um, I guess software, e-commerce, um, kind of affiliate, some sort of like, you know, blogs and stuff like that, really websites and SaaS. Um, so I started talking with them and get paired up with the broker and they kind of go through the whole process saying, hey, here's how much your business is worth, which was really valuable because we just didn't really know at the time. Um, and then we can also help you sell it for a commission. So basically the way these brokers work most of the time is that you know, kind of been on how much money your business is going to sell for, they'll take a certain percentage of commission where if it's, you know, a lower amount, they'll take a little bit higher commission. But if it's like millions of dollars, they'll take like a staggered lower commission, you know, kind of as the deal gets bigger and bigger. Um, and so they would list it all. They would find all the buyers. Um, they would kind of use their networks. And they had a huge email list. That's where Moment was. They had a huge email list where they'd kind of send out these deals regularly. You can go get on their site, you know, right now and sign up and just start to get these deals yourself. It's kind of interesting. Like I still kind of watch there and just like I'm kind of watching what businesses are coming up for sale. Um, and then they would kind of put the whole deal together. So that was really cool. And so for me, that was like a huge lifesaver because I just wanted to learn about the business. I want to learn about buying and selling and brokering deals. And, uh, and I also felt like, hey, we're not going to have to find the buyer um, we're probably going to get a better valuation and a better deal at the end of the day, you know, than me kind of getting hosed on my own. Like, it's probably going to pay for itself, um, paying their fee and all that. Um, and I'm just going to get to learn the process. And so that's what it was like for me um, going through that. And then, yeah, so basically what they did is they started kind of reaching out to their network. We kind of put together a whole, like, prospectus with all the different information. What's our revenue? What's our churn? What's every number in our business? Put it out to all the guys out there on the list. And it came back. It came down to about six buyers is what it came down to. And I don't know if you know the inside story on uh, yeah. some of this. So it basically came down to six buyers and we would kind of hop on basically like phone calls with these different buyers beforehand. Although I don't ever think we got on a call with you, Mo. I, mean, I don't know if we ever scheduled one. No. But people would have questions and say, hey, I just want to get on for half an hour. And we'd kind of talk through the software. We'd, talk, we'd do a code review. We'd talk through, um, you know, how the company started, where we saw it going, kind of anything like that. And just people just kind of doing their due diligence. Um, and it ended up coming down to people that, you know, we had kind of our asking price. Here's our asking price. Um, we, we want this. In order for you to, like, play the game and, and, and kind of get to the next level, you've got to match the asking price. And so we ended up having one guy match the asking price. And what happened then was pretty cool. So whenever somebody does that, they would kind of shut out everybody else and say, hey, if you want to move forward at all, you've got to match this asking price. And, and you can't go over yet. And so everyone's going to come in at the exact same price. And so moment, that's when I guess you kind of said, hey, yep, I want to play. I'll do that asking price there. And we ended up coming down with like six buyers. And, you know, we talked to our broker one day. So he said, okay, all six of these guys, you know, want it. It's all for the same price. Let's kind of talk through, you know, who you want to go through really intense due diligence with. Um, and then at the end of that, they can all do a bid. If there's, you know, two or three people or four people, they can all bid whatever they want to bid and bid higher than the amount. Um, so we're looking at these six people and we're like, you know, again, I don't 
I want payphones to go to a, a good company, a good guy that I know can really treat our customers well. I want the company to grow well. You know, it's like we're not going to get anything out of it, but like we built a, a, pay, a software product that we were proud of. We want it to go well. Um, and honestly, like I didn't, I, I would have done it with any of the six, but the problem is just due diligence it takes a while. Um, you know, going through due diligence with all six people would just take up a ton of time. We were trying to build proof. So I think we trimmed it down to three people of the six. And I think you, you were one of the guys that we didn't end up going with from that part, right, Moen? Correct. Right. Initially. Part, yeah, yeah, initially. And I think partly that was because, again, I don't think we had, we had talked to you yet. And so just a little bit easier. It's like, okay, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, I hadn't talked to him. And then, like, I think there was, like, some terms on there, too. Everybody kind of say, hey, I want this or I want that. And I don't remember if yours were favorable or unfavorable. Um, but anyway, we ended up going with these other three guys and saying, okay, let's do due diligence with those guys. Um, from that point, um, one of them, I think, dropped out right away for whatever reason. People can drop out. Um, and, and then we were down to, to the final two. And so we're doing due diligence with these two guys, um, two different companies. I think one, one was just this kind of guy who's a developer that wanted to buy a company for the first time. The other one was like a private equity firm. So this is a company that invests in other companies, um, was going to kind of acquire pay funnels as part of their portfolio. So two very different buyers. And that's not what we found in the process. There was like kind of the solo guys that want to buy it. And there was also the private equity companies that want to go out there and buy companies added to their portfolio. And so we go through, and hey, are you still there, Roman? You kind of froze for a second. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So, so we're kind of at that point. Um, we want to, you know, move quickly on it. They said a two-week closing period. So this business closes in two weeks. We're going to have two, two weeks of due diligence, and then you've got to make your bid, and we're closing it because we don't want to stretch this thing out forever, which is really cool for me. I didn't know how long due diligence would go or anything like that. Um, so we go through with these guys, and, and how we started feeling – was throughout the process of valuing the company, throughout the process of the whole thing, our, our MRR had gone up a decent amount. I mean, I don't remember exactly what had gone up, but it had gone up a decent amount, which directly I mean, impacted the valuation by quite a bit. And so as we kind of get to the end of this thing, I'm looking at our business, I'm looking at our numbers, and I'm like, man, like the business was growing faster because we were kind of polishing up the, the product. We were kind of decreasing churn through all this stuff, trying to get the business ready to sell. And this is sort of looking like it was in way better shape than it had initially. And so I talked to the broker and I'm like, you know, I really think this business is worth, you know, quite a bit more than we initially had it at. And he was, you know, I mean, he looked at it, he, he agreed that you kind of, if you run all the numbers again, run it through their formula again, yes, it spits out, you know, a larger number than we initially have here. Um, what his concern was, was, well, we're kind of like towards the end of this process. I don't know if this is going to go over real well if we come back and kind of raise the price, you know, with a week to go. So we kind of weighed that. I got that. But, but I really just felt like, you know, we, it was worth a lot more than it was. So I think I was willing to take that risk at the end of the day after kind of deciding on that. So we ended up coming back to the uh, two buyers um, and saying, hey, it's not going to be this price. It's going to be, I don't know, about 20%, 30% more. Um, than we initially had asked. And, and one of the guys at that point, you know, he was actually coming back with a different deal and he was going to do like an earn out. He wanted to pay, hey, we'll pay half now and we'll pay the rest of it in six months. And that's not what we wanted, right? Because we wanted cash to fund proof. We didn't want to have half now, half in six months. If I was going to wait six months to get the money, I would just keep pay funnels and just take the cash out of the business. Um, and then the other guy ended up um, kind of being frustrated with us at that point, and maybe Moment maybe experienced a little bit of this frustration, I don't know, but he was frustrated with us, you know, that we had kind of raised the price on that. And he ended up backing out of the deal at that point. He kind of said, well, I would buy it for the original price. I'm not going to buy it for this upgraded price and, uh, and backed out. And I think at the end of the day, that was probably more of like an emotional response um, to that. And I could see why he would be frustrated. Again, I think when you run the numbers, it's, it's a very good valuation. I think uh, even the deal that we'd kind of come back with was a good was a good price um but yeah he ended up dropping out so we're kind of back at the point where you know the business is, is you know back on the market um talking with the brokers they're like hey well we've still got some hot leads from before we've got guys like moman here who are interested so let me kind of reach back out to all of the like past leads and kind of communicate with them and see where the deal's at see if anybody's still interested um so they kind of put it back out there and i guess that's when it came back to you moment you kind of started talking to them about getting back in is that right 
That's correct. So I just reached out to Eric and I asked him, like, what's up, what's going on? And then he said, oh, it's back in the market. And he said they want more. And then I was like, what if they come back again after two weeks? They come back and they say, like, we want even more because their business went up. Then it's like, no, this time I made sure yep. that this is it. You know, they cannot go up, you know, further up or asking for more money. So I said, all right. So that one thing is secured that, you know, this even if your price. business goes up, you know, you will honor the asking price, the second asking price. Yeah. And that's what's tough about it. I found that even throughout, and I felt that tension, honestly, even during the, you know, time with you, was I'm still just looking at the business and it's just growing, you know, month over month and see like, like if it grows a thousand MRR, it's not just a thousand MRR. I mean, that's multiplied by, you know, some, you know, two years, three years, whatever kind of the, uh, the multiple is. And so you're kind of being able, able to add that amount on every single time. So it gets significant. And and I found that that was, that was a good learning experience for me to be like, Hey, I just need to be comfortable with the number. Um, I need to ask a price that I feel really good about knowing that the business is probably still going to grow. But even as I, as I was talking with the brokers, they're like, yeah, this is the tough part about selling a growing business because it was growing, you know, quickly, um, relatively. And so he's like, yeah, this is the problem with growing, with selling a growing business is that it keeps getting better and better. And it's good for the buyers because it's more attractive, but it's, it's a little harder for the seller too, because you start to feel like, well, it's a lot bigger than it was a month ago. Um, so that was really tough kind of, uh, kind of for us the whole time. That was a learning experience for me, but, but yeah, so tell us what was it kind of like, you know, so you kind of resubmit the bid, you say, Hey, again, I'll match the asking price. I'll play. Um, what happened after that then for you on your side? So I was in touch with the with the broker and I was talking back and forth even if after you accepted the previous offer and and uh so so I submitted the bid uh I think there was I'm not sure how many bids were were submitted to you forwarded to maybe, you I think there was maybe three, two or three that came back that time second time around yeah okay so he said okay I've submitted the bid and you know the advantage that I had was I created something similar to PayFunnel. And he saw that as a value. It's like, you know, if out of all those three or two, if you get a if you acquire this business, chances are higher that this business will grow. And it's probably better for you. One thing that I told the brokers, like they don't have to worry about the technology part of it. You know. Uh, I, when, when I did a code review, I just, you know, probably spent like very, probably 15, 20 minutes, you know, going over the code. And I showed JP my application. I was like, oh, cool. So, so after you sell a business, you do want to do a knowledge transfer. You do want to help the new buyer with the operations and support, but uh, you don't want to spend too much time, you know, babysitting them. So one thing that it, I told the brokers, like, you know, they don't have to worry about educating me about the technology part of it. So that's one plus for the sellers. Like, all right, one less thing where, you know, we need to worry about. So uh, marketing is something, the way you guys approach, and I wanted to actually continue doing that because I'm good at the developing, but I'm not that great at marketing. So, yep. so, so so that was the another add-on part. So, you know, Eric understood, and I guess, you know, you guys, I'm not sure what factors y'all consider before y'all decided to go with me rather than the other one. Yeah. Beside that, I had a cash ready to go. Yeah, um, and that's what it kind of came down to. So I actually, I remember now, so we're down to two buyers. One guy was in Australia. Um, you were in Houston area, right? Correct. Um, and so, and both are asking the same price and, you know, we were, we were good with that price. And so it's like, well, how do you decide here? Um, and you're right. A lot of it comes down to some of the like kind of extra little things on there, you know, and people kind of ask different things. I think you had a couple extra requirements, you know, that you want to say, I'll buy it, but you know, I want X, Y, and Z as part of it, or I'll buy it, but I want the next 30 days to look like this. And, and what's pretty standard in buying a business or selling a business is that you kind of give ongoing support for 30 days afterwards, you know, so I think we agreed to what, 20 hours uh, of right. ongoing support where Moment could use that time with me, Moment could use that time with JP who built the software um, for kind of ongoing support. So it's kind of things like that. Um, but then also we were looking at just location wise and with one guy in Australia, 
again, it's fine with us, but the other guy and, and you know, the, the States, it was way easier for us to one transfer the money. So we thought we could get the money easier. We thought we could transfer all the Stripe information over easier to you with the payments and all that. Uh, and we thought for our like communication afterwards, it can be way easier being in the States. And so that's kind of what it came down to. Both are asking the same price. Um, and, and two, I think we just, we'd seen easy pay. That's what it's called, right? Right. You know, we'd seen that. Or, yeah, we'd yeah. seen that and we thought, uh, well, this guy clearly, you know, is a good coder. He built this thing. It's got a lot of cool features. Like, I think he could really take this and develop pay funnels to the next level, which I think you have. Um, and so for us, that was kind of what went through our mind. And so we ended up saying, great, you know, we want to go ahead and do this with, uh, with Moman here. Um, he's the bidder that we want to accept um, his offer. We told the other guy, no or the broker told the other guy, no, that's what's nice about this whole thing too, guys, is that we went through the broker for everything. Like if I ever had a thought I wanted to share with the buyers, if I ever had anything, I'm not having to talk to anybody. I'm not having to negotiate with anybody there. I just kind of talked to my one broker the entire time and he puts the whole deal together, which that, that's a pretty nice service, I think. It's just, it'd be so much easier than me having to talk to tons of different people about it. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so we end up, I guess, signing the agreement with you um, you go to the bank. I think you had, you know, maybe a week, took you a week to kind of get the money from the bank. Is right. that right? Right. Yeah. He went on vacation. It was during the springtime. So okay. he went on vacation and I was kind of stuck. It's like, Oh, I need to transfer this money. And then I reached out to the broker and I said, Hey, can you ex ask for an extension? And I'm, I can, he said, you know, there's another person involved and, you know, it's like, okay, here's, here's what I can do. I can deposit ten thousand yep. dollars into the escrow as a good faith money saying you know i'm really serious and if for some reason if i back out you get to keep ten thousand i'll lose ten thousand so he said okay that sounds fair and then he reached out to you guys and he said this is what i was willing to do and and then you know i guess he agreed and then we did all the transfer yeah and basically how it works guys is they we use an escrow account i think just escrow.com Right. Uh, which is kind of a third party, you know, holding tank for the money. So he puts in 10,000, you know, and then eventually you put in, you know, the rest of the money. Our broker took out their cut on the way out. And then once we had transferred over all the assets, once we'd given him all the code, all the Twitter account, you know, all of that, he basically checks a box and says, hey, I've received everything that I was promised. You know, we check a box says, hey, you know, we're ready to receive the money. We've sent over everything. At that point, like the funds are released back to us. And so it's a pretty nice service. You know, they take some sort of little cut on it, but, uh, but it's a nice service just to build trust, and, like transfer, you know, large amounts of money like that. Um, so man, looking back on the sale, like, like just like, what's your, what are your feelings on that? We'll kind of go into like, you know, what it looked like after the sale and all that, but just like from that point, like, what emotions were going through your head? Like, what was that like buying your very first business? I'm sure it was a little bit tough at times. Yes. So, so you buy a business and then, you know, you dump, you know, a money into a business that's equivalent to your almost your savings. And then you go through this phase of, you know, panic, you know, all this phase of, you know, oh God, what did I do about a business which I don't know much about yet, except that it makes money and except that it has customers, but all the other part, I don't know. So I was going through that phase like, oh crap, now what I've done, you know, if this business goes down, I'll be doomed. So that's the phase I was going through. And then I've heard about, you know, while buying a business, I've heard all these horror stories where this never buy these ads based or traffic based websites because they do a black hat SEO. They drive like tons of traffic to the website. And after you buy, like in two months, it just drops the traffic and, you know, goes away. And I was going through that. You know, I was going through that thought, like, what if this is something like that? They probably did, like, you know, some marketing, some kind of, you know, I don't know, something where draw a lot of traffic, a lot of subscriber, and then all of a sudden, this all people will go away. And I was going through that panic mode, and I've talked to the brokers, like, hey, this is what I'm feeling right now. And he's like, you know, that's okay. You know, everybody goes through that. When you're first time buying a business, when you do it, Anything that you do first time, you know, you have this yep. little fear in the behind. So I waited. I was looking at the bear metrics, and then, I, well, it looks stable. And then uh, sometime I saw, like, you know, a drop in customer and dropping out. I would share a screenshot 
with you guys and with the brokers, like, hey, you know, people are leaving, you know, what's going on? And that's when you would step in, like, tell me what's the RR, monthly RR, or MRR. And it's like, this is what it is. And then you were like, it's not going anywhere. So as time passed, and you know, I kept looking at bear metrics, and, you know, it was holding its value. It was, you know, stabilized. It was not like, you know, once the business was sold and, you know, it just dropped, you know, customers started leaving and this and that. So that made me feel comfortable. Or comfortable and, but and initially go ahead so initially i was going through that phase okay what have i done i've paid a lot of money over here what's going to happen next you know is, is it going to fail or am i going to be doomed and, and, and what, then, what were your friends saying during this time i think your friends had sir, some uh, interesting sir, right so when you talk to people saying hey i'm going to buy this business and you know, this is what it is it's like why are they selling it and it's like you know they have another, another business no something's wrong with it you know why are you paying this much? You know, so people will always give you this. The, the, okay, there will be a two kind of people. One will support you, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, sure, you should buy it." You know, you know it's your money; you can do whatever. And then other people will try to, you know, bring you down, saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do that." You know, you developer, you should build it on your own. Or, well, yeah, even if I do it, you know, even if I spend it, I guess you you guys spend like a year and brought that business to where it was when you sold it. Yep. Even if I would have spent that much time, I would not be able to get the customers that you guys did. And this acquisition was more like a customer acquisition than a, a product acquisition. Software, yeah. Correct. So, so that's the value I saw. You were buying the cash flow more than you were buying the, the actual code. Correct. Which is so smart. So smart Correct. that you did that. Uh, and, and you're cash. kind of saying, hey, the return I can get from pay funnels cash is greater than the return than the interest I've got to pay to the bank. And so right. any amount in the middle there is just free money. You know, I mean, it's not right. free. I mean, you're working for it. But right. but yeah, it's like you can dramatically kind of make the spread there. Um, so how did you end up kind of getting up the courage to just go through with it? I mean, if your friend, if you're kind of freaking out, like, how did you get to the point where you trusted us, where you kind of believed the story of it, where you believed the numbers? And you said, you know what, like I've got to go do this thing. Leap of faith, so, yeah. so, so, well, believe in destiny, you know, whatever is meant for you, it's going to happen. So, so now, you know, first time I didn't get it, I was, I was like, all right, you know, I did not get it, but I'll keep trying and I'll keep doing it. It's just the faith, I guess, that you know. Payphone came back in the market, and this time around, I bid for it, did not negotiate, give the full price, and I got it. So, so that was one positive sign, you know. And then, you know, entrepreneurship or you know, being a businessman, it's all about taking a risk. You have to do your calculation. Okay, so the valuation you're giving, okay, even if you don't take a money out of it, how long will it take to get my money back? And Within that period, what are my strategies to actually reduce? So, you know, let's, for example, normally valuations are between 2.0 to 3.5. So on an annual basis. So let's say 2.5 is the valuation. So it's going to take me two and a half years to get my money back. But between that, if I actually add new features, do some more marketing, reach out to some channel partners, then I can get my money back in less than two and a half years. So that's the calculation I did. Yep. I, said, I said, you know, let me find channel partners and through them I can, you know, get a better deal. So if everything goes according to the plan, then, then I should get my money back in 18 months. Or and and if, yeah, can you make your money, not only make your money back, but can you make a salary on top of that greater than what you could get by work of corporate America, you know, and can you get some profit, you know, even on top of that? And right. I guess when you ran the calculations, I'm, I'm guessing the calculations were just pretty good, right? Like it's hard to imagine a scenario, I think, you know, where that's not probably going to happen based on the situation. Correct. So you always have to see two sides of it. Okay. If it does not do well, if it goes down yep. and if it does good. So, you know, if it does not do well, if it goes down, I can, you know, probably resell the business and, you yep. know, get some of the money back, if not all. But uh, if it goes according to the plan or, you know, that if it stays, so let's say, you know, you always say, you know, there are two kind of business. One is a growth and another one is a lifestyle. So even if I don't do anything, and if I, which I don't intend to, but uh, 
the cash flow is still coming in. It's more like a lifestyle. You know, it may take three years, four years to get my money back. And after that point, you know, it's a asset that I have it. And yep. when I sell it, I can cash sell out it. on that asset. Yeah. So, but, uh, so that's like a, a moderate, like, you know, one is worst comes scenario. Another is, you know, you just sit on it. And then, you know, first one is, you know, you actually grow it, you know, you yep. treat it as a business. Yeah. So with that, you know, Every customer that I add, it's adding, it's actually value, its valuation is going up by, you know, two and a half or three or two or whatever the calculation is. So, see so if I had like 100 customers, you know, not L3, L3, LM3, that's the term they use. L3M, L3M the last three last, months averaged. Right, so I'm not going with last three months, I'm, I'm going with last 12 months and when you work on it, when you do marketing, when you grow the business, you're not only increasing your monthly recurring revenue, but you're actually increasing the valuation of the business. Yep. So at that point, you can either go to an investor or you can go to a competitor or you can you know, just put it back in the market and you can cash out big time Beautiful. in a short amount of time. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah, man, this is exciting. I think as I was going through the process too, it, it, it occurred to me, how crazy it was to sell, like how great of a deal it was to sell a business. You know, it's like, not only do I have the cash flow from pay funnels, I've got the asset. And, and it's like, the product is not just pay funnel software, the product is the business, you know? And so now when we think about proof, like the, of course the product is, you know, the proof software that you pay, you know, monthly for, but also the product we're developing here is the business of proof. And I'm trying to develop it, I'm trying to, uh, make it a very easy sell someday to where actually we can sell, we can cash out, we can get a great multiple for it. We can actually sell off the entire business as a product, which is a really, really cool idea. And uh, and I think like from your perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, yeah, you've got to kind of bet on whether you think it's going to go well or not. You're kind of betting on yourself there um, in a sense. And, and I think, yeah, for the right business, it's probably going to go pretty well. Um, so, man, so let's talk about just kind of after the sale then. So... You know, you transfer the money to us, war pumps, most money I've ever seen in my life. Like, this is awesome. You know, we're going to take this money. We're going to, you know, put it towards, you know, investing in proof. We can focus more now. So I think it was a really good decision for us. Oh, actually, I'll tell you this, though. I don't know if you know this, but uh, the day of the sale, the last day to close, I get cold feet. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I've been talking about it. Like, we don't know. Proof isn't making money yet. So proof is still just a, a bet. We're like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, like, we haven't seen proof grow yet. Like, maybe it's not going to, you know. Like, pay funnels is a really stable asset we think could grow to, you know, X amount of money and be worth, you know, three times what it is in a year. And so I actually get cold feet on the final day. And I call up our broker and I say, hey, man, I just want to talk about this. I was like, honestly, I'm kind of feeling like we should keep it. And again, they go through this all the time, right? They probably get calls from people on the last day yeah. all the time. I'm like, I'm thinking that we should keep it and just grow it ourselves. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, tell you guys that and kind of talk about that. So I'm like 90% out. He's like, well, before you do that, let me talk, to, or I want you to talk to Thomas, our, uh, our, you know, boss, the guy who runs the whole thing. So I was like, great. Like, I'm going to talk to Thomas. He's going to talk me into this thing. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to close to a sales pitch. Like, I think we just want to keep it and, and get out. So this is like this is like six o'clock that night. I think the deal had to close. I think by like midnight that night was kind of the last day, wasn't it? Okay. Like right at the very end. Yeah. Um, so I think it was like the last day. And so he calls me. We talked for like an hour, and he just basically is like, "Dave, you've got another great business here that's coming up. I, I love the sound of proof. It's going to go well. I, I think I think you would regret it had you held on to it, uh, or if you hold on to pay funnels." I'm talking to him, and, and just over the course of the hour, I was like, you know, I was like, yeah, I trust you. And this guy was connected to SaaS entrepreneurs, so I didn't want to, like, burn a boat with him. He's like, it's not going to look good on us if you pull out of the deal here now, and you're not going to be able to list pay funnels with us again. Uh, and there's going to be, like, some consequences for just kind of being a sketchy guy and pulling out. Uh, and so I actually so I said, yep, you know what, let's go do that. And that was really, really good for me. Like, I'm really glad we did that. I think I would have definitely regretted it, you know, a week later when, you know, we're kind of proof starting to grow. Now we've got like to run pay funnels and entrepreneur Alliance and proof now. Um, yeah, it's just, it was a really good decision, but yeah, I don't know if you ever even knew about that, but yeah, no. we, uh, we almost pulled out on the very last day, but it was a, it was a great decision to sell it. 
Um, so let's talk through just kind of the last, you know, the last little bit here. You know, you, we sold it on what, like April 1st, basically it transferred. Right. So you Correct. take over April 1st. And you've got all these new features and, you, and you've built up a bunch of sweet features. So if you guys are current Payphones users, you're going to see a whole bunch of new great stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, if you're not Payphones users, now would be a good time to get in. You can get a bunch of good features before, you know, any price increases or anything like that. Payphones.com. But, uh, but yeah, tell us kind of like what, what, what was it like after the sale, after you do that, as you start building out features, what's that process been like? So... So you had a cold fit and so did I. So I reached out to her. It's like, hey, I don't want it. <laughs> you did you on know? the last day? Yeah. So so it's like, no, no. I mean, you know, trust me, it's going to be good. I didn't talk to Thomas. But, did you just uh, talk to uh, yeah, Kevin? Just, yes, Ke- yeah, no, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin yeah, O. Was he, he was our guy, I think. Ke- I think, what is his name? Eric or Kevin? Kevin Her? was our guy. I don't know if we had the same guy. Uh, let's see. I think uh, we did. Kevin O. O H. Oh, Kevin. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what I'm saying. So you uh, called Kevin on the last day and said that you didn't want it. Well, it's it was more of a you know fear of you know taking my saving and putting into this, even though I'm getting a loan, but still yeah. it's a, a liability. Yeah. So it's like you know, do you trust me? You know. So he said, "Don't worry, it's going to be okay." You know. It's not what they do is you know, Affi International compared to other brokerage websites, they do a good before when they bring it to the buyers, they do their own due diligence, they do their own vetting. They don't take every business uh, uh, to sell. You know, they, he said, you know, we do our own due diligence. We, I can tell you this business is not one of those that you buy and then, you know, after two months, six months, it disappears. Yep. So, so he said, so he said that and then, you know, we had a talk and I was like, all right, you know, let's do it. So that's what we did. Very cool. And and he said, you know, you'll get support from them. You'll get training from them. So, you know, don't worry about all the other part. So I was like, okay. So we closed the deal and then transferred the assets. I was going through it, setting it up, uh, development uh, environment on my side. And then at the time, I believe uh, John's friend's dad passed away, so he couldn't be available. So I was just waiting to get some uh, to get started to start you know crunching and hacking and i waited waited and then i was doing support ticket and i was kind of panicking because of the churn people were canceling i was not looking at the new signups i was just looking at the cancellation and i was freaking out I was like crap you know this is one of those deals that you lose all your money and i remember the first day i remember the first day you're like man we've had two people cancel yeah. Like, what's going on? And I was like, well, dude, pull it up. Like, you've had four people sign up. Like, you know, it's like, we're like 10 hours in, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah and you've had more people, but yeah, you have had people cancel. And, right. uh, and that could be tough. So they transferred the, you know, supporting portal, the using the password. I opened it and I was like, please cancel my account, cancel my account, cancel. And that's part of the churn, you know, JP's like, you know, that's part of the business. You know, you'll have new people sign up and then you'll have some people who will leave. Or for some other reasons, or some reasons, for example. So, so that was my first exposure. It's like crap, what's going on? And then I waited, and then you know, our JP and I we set up the environment, and then I said, okay, let me get used to the code. I'll build a couple feature, and while I'm building that, I'll probably get you know familiarized with the code. So I did that, and then I guess you went to YC. You guys went to California. So I was like, okay, you know, let them do their things, and then I'll come back, and then I'll do another set of training for support and this and that. So so that's what the phases we went through. Yeah. Uh, very cool. You guys were very busy with proof. So I had to probably wait like a day or two before when I get a reply back. And I understand, I mean, you have a business, but then I, over here, I'm just waiting sometimes. Yeah. But uh, we went through that phase and, you know, I've already worked on the feature, which is in, you know, pre-production of beta testing right now. Yeah, tell us about some of the features that you've created and that you're about to roll out for PayFunnels. And even like people that are listening that either want to try PayFunnels or using PayFunnels, like what does the future of PayFunnels look like here over the next couple of months? Right. So features, the one thing it lacked was, you know, uh, right now what it did it is, you know, you can create an invoice, it will give you a link, you can send it to your customers and they can pay it online, whether it's one-time payment, subscription or payment plan. That's great. That's awesome. That works fine. And then you have people that leave. You need to cancel subscriptions. 
So for that, they had to go to Stripe and do it. So what I did is I added that feature into the pay funnel. So they can go, it will list all your customers. They can click on customer profile mm -hmm. uh, and they'll see the subscription that they have and they can cancel the subscription right from there. Uh, additionally, they can also update the credit card. So let's say credit card is expiring or they changed it or got lost. They can directly from PayFunnel update the credit card of the customers. And in addition to that, we also also build uh, payments, reference. So, you know, sometimes you have to give reference. So you come to the PayFunnel, you'll see all the recent transactions. You can click on it and you can issue partial of complete refund directly from PayFunnel. And you will also see fail charges and it will give you a reason why a card or a charge failed and what action they need to take uh, in order to you know, rectify the issue. So that's done. Notification, uh, we, we listen to customers and one of the customers said, it would be nice if I get a notification every time a money is transferred from Stripe to a bank account or every time a customer charges their card. So we build that notification piece and every time a customer who will charge their card or a refund is issued or a charge is failed, the pay finance customer will get a notification saying, hey, you know, Dave just purchased your service. You know, that's notification. Or a uh, moment's card failed, or here's the email. So you can take an action according to that. You can reach out to your customer. So that's the another feature. That's the feature that's going will be going in a few weeks after we do our better testing. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've seen a ton of great features, even as I've kind of hopped in there. And now uh, I think that's probably something that you're going to be able to do that, you know, we didn't do or, or couldn't do is just develop the product out a ton. We, we build a really good core functionality. We could take payments really well. And even like the other day, we were on our webinar and our order form wasn't working and we were scrambling around and like, we had to get paid because like, I'm like, go to this link and, and pay. And everyone's like, it's broken. It's so like, what did, we, what did we end up doing? We created a really quick pay funnels link in about 15 seconds, uh, put it in the chat and the people started paying through the pay funnels link. That's really what it was designed to do. It's like, hey, we need to take payment really simply and easily. We kind of developed a really good core functionality, but, but what you're going to be able to do is just take this thing to the next level and, uh, and really develop that thing out, which is really, really cool. All right. So um, in the long term, we are thinking about creating a mobile app. So let's say you went to a convention or you went to a networking event and you find a customer over there, you don't want to wait until you go home and send them a link yep. because you already made a deal in there, strike it when it's hot. So not immediately, but down the road, uh, we'll be working on a mobile app and you, you know, pay for those customer will be able to accept card from their mobile phone. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome, man. Now I'm excited about it. The app looks really great. I'm excited to see, see it live yeah. in the wild here now. Yeah. Um, and then for us, just on the back end too, I mean, it's just, again, it was a really great decision to do it. It's been fun getting to know MoMA and just seeing somebody who's a really good developer kind of put their magic on it. Um, it's been, it's allowed us to focus, which has been really cool. We can focus on proof and, and not that, you know, proof is, is better than pay funnels or anything like that. It's just having focus really, really focused on something and really aligned around one thing can be really, really, um, really, really effective. And so now really we've just got EA and proof. Those are our two main focuses here. Uh, and just kind of being able to, to have, you know, the extra brain capacity to go focus on those has been really cool. Um, plus, yeah, the cash has allowed us to go move quick. You know, we went and hired a, a pretty, well, we've hired two developers now on top of JP. So we've got a three person development team and, and developers are expensive. Well, you guys are, you guys are not cheap. Uh, I'd say we've, <laughs> we've put a lot of money into develop, development here now, which we wouldn't have been able to do. Had we not, we have to grow so much slower and just kind of our trajectory with proof has just been way different because now we've got the cash from the sale to go do that. So appreciate you funding uh, the future of proof here, helping us get off to a start there too, man. I think that's a, a real win-win. Um, did any final just thoughts or advice for people that are like thinking about buying a business, think that's a cool idea, anything you would kind of leave them with? Sure, yeah. I mean, you know, when you acquire a business, you know, you acquire a relationship as well. The relationship that I have with Dave and, you know, John, I wouldn't have that if I would not have acquired this business. And the knowledge that I'm gaining from, I would say, expert marketing person like Dave, I would not have gained that knowledge. So 
uh, advice when you buy a business, you know, make sure you're buying something in something that you are familiar with, something that you are doing, something that's part of your domain. I would not go buy a a jewelry business because that's not my industry. That's not my forte. So, you know, if you want to buy a business, buy something that you are good at and that adds value to your existing business or your skill set. Uh, always do, you know, pros and cons, you know, worst come scenarios and, you know, good come scenario, create a plan, uh, cash flow, make sure, and have a team, you know, you got to have a team. When you have a team, you kind of distribute your risk, you know, yep. if I was buying, if I did not have a cash, you know, and if I think this was a very high risk business, then I would have actually another person join me. At that point, I have actually cut my risk in half. So cut your upside so, in half, but you cut your risk in half too, which sometimes exactly. that can be a good thing. Correct. Especially if it's your first time. Yep. I mean, once you learn that lessons, you'll be more, you know, comfortable with your second acquisition and so so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do your due diligence. Talk to as many people as you can. You will get both sides of the feedback. Uh, you, people will say no, you know, don't do it. People will say yes, do it. And that's the same thing on our side too. We were talking to people, and some people would be like, "Yes, you need to sell this thing," and then other friends would be like, "Dude, I've run the numbers," and like, "No, you should not sell this thing." Uh, so, so from our end too, yeah, you get you get people on both sides, and, and you've got to hear both sides. You know, it's like I think that means you probably. If you're hearing both sides, it means it's probably about the right deal. And we've kind of said that before too. We're like, you think you paid too much for it. I kind of think you paid too little for it. And I think right. that means it was probably about right. You know, if like you think you paid too much and I'm like, man, like we just really got an incredible deal here, you know, then like it was probably too much. I think we probably found a, a happy medium with the price too. All right. Um, anything, yeah, right. anything else here? We'll wrap up. Yeah, uh, when that's it. I mean, you know, when you're buying a business, I would say go, if you if it's your first time, go talk to an expert, hire like a consultant, you know, they know more about the business than your buddies do. So that would help. And, and you what, know, did the, what did the broker cost you? Did it cost you anything? It I did cost me $1,000. Okay. So I told them, you know, usually the brokerage, it works is, you know, you take commission from the seller, not from the buyer. Yeah. Like, no, this is our, this is how we do it. Uh, this is administrative fee. So, so I say, all right, you know, I'll just include that as part of the, you know, expense. So, yeah. so when I talk about the acquisition, I include the asking price and all the escrow fees and everything. And that's my, you know, purchase price. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But I could totally recommend FE international, um, dot com. I had a great experience with them. I think I would, I would definitely do business with them again. I think, um, yeah, when it comes time to sell proof, kind of depending on the size of it and all that, I'm going to be definitely reaching back out to them and saying, hey, um, yeah, I'd love to get your help kind of navigating some of this. So I had a good experience. Um, and yeah, guys, well, hey, that's kind of the uh, the end of this EA Masterclass. It'd be fun to get Moment back in for another Masterclass here in like six months or a year and just see like where has PayFunnels gone. What's that looked like? Kind of fast forward on that. But I hope you guys learned something. Comment below. There should be a little Facebook comment deal below this or post back in the Facebook group. And uh, yeah, I've learned a ton. Hopefully, you guys learned a ton from this one. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Keep it up. All right, see you in All right. All right, Dave. Thanks. Now, here are some interesting facts about the mastermind, which uh, give you an idea of how important it is and how necessary that you embrace this principle and make use of it in attaining success in your chosen occupation. First of all, it is the principle through which you may borrow and use the education, the experience, the influence, and perhaps the capital of other people in carrying out your own plans in life. It is the principle through which you can accomplish in one year more than you could accomplish without it in a lifetime if you depended entirely upon your own efforts for success.